I'm Wayne Carey, and this is The Truth Hurts. Well, here we are again, uh, albeit a little bit later than what we usually are, because, uh, well, obviously it was Easter Monday yesterday, Tony, so episode six. Did the Easter Bunny Already, go to your place, Wayne? It, uh, it did reach my place. The kids, uh, far too much chocolate. Clearly, you indulged. Um, Clearly. We've, 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 we've got to get you... I was about to give you a compliment. I know, we've got to get you on to what I'm doing. Which is? Which is, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll reveal what I've, I've been doing. Clearly, as you know, I haven't had a, it's now four, over four weeks. So How many hours? By the way, it's not that, how many hours? Oh, I don't know, that's you a nitwit. Hey, you're talking about being off the Just grog, aren't what, you? What, your attire over this six-week period, you've come in from wearing a bowl of fruit, a suit, you were all done up, you yeah. had the... You had the fresh Oompa Loompa look with yes. the orange. You had the eyelashes tinted, the eyebrows done. Now you've gone back to the checks of a cash and not for fashion look with the jumper, the college look over You're the top. You're trying to show off in front of the boss? You've, <laughs> you've got all of these. You've just, you're have just you morphing into this sort of different person right don't, in front of my eyes. Wayne, don't worry about my fashion. You look like, you look like you've dropped a little bit too, which I is have. good. You, yeah. You, are, you, are you seeking compliments of yourself? No, no. Kmart's no, obviously no, the new black I, t-shirt sponsor. Of uh, no, I just. Uh, you know, well, you look like you've lost a bit of weight. The the uh, Easter. Yeah. Plenty happened over the weekend. Did you train? Uh, did I train? Yeah. yeah. Train all weekend. Did you? Fe- felt fantastic. I, the one thing that I didn't do on the weekend, and everyone knows, I didn't watch any footy. Oh, so you kept to your bed, did of you? Of course, I've got three weeks to go. Three weeks suspension left. Well, last, and, and last I didn't week miss, I didn't miss much. Why not? Last week. You sent TikTok into overdrive. The Americans and the Chinese spoke about it. You nearly blew up the platform. <laughs> what happened? That, well, oh boy. Uh, you know what it you know what it told me? So just under 400,000 people watch that on TikTok. Yes. It tells, it tells you that people are sick of what's going on with our game. It, yes. got, a, it got a reaction. So there are a lot of disappointed people out there because of the inconsistencies around certain rules. All that you hope now is that if that gets four weeks, I want to see. I want to see that maintained now. I, I don't agree with it. Oh, I don't agree with it. But let's make sure that they're consistent with it. The thing that I saw over Easter, other than you know a lot of people eating a lot of Easter eggs and Mike, you should see the fridge at home. It yes. is still chock a block full of chocolate, and you can't help yourself. Like, oh, it, so it, you did indulge. Well, you do. You have you, you think you're doing the right thing and then, you know, towards – it gets to about 7.30, 8 o'clock and the kids are in bed and you're sitting there and you have a green tea oh, and, duck. <laughs> and you get a little <laughs> – you sneak a little – So you've traded 15 pots for green tea. You get a little chalky and then that turns into two, three, four. So what, you overeat. What, what, was your, what was your favourite chocolate? I'm a Turkish delight man. Yeah, okay. Now, you either love Turkish delight, delight bit, or you don't. bit soft on the inside? It's probably a bit like you and I. You either like us or you don't. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, well, I did. I, for those out there who are watching, 376,000 of them. Coriander's the same. You either like it or you don't. Yeah, I had the big Toblerone. I got down at... Um, you look like you had the big Toblerone. Oh, I'll <laughs> tell you what. If you, I'll tell you, if you've got an autoimmune disorder like I do, do not eat chocolates. I t- I'll give you the tip. I didn't know you had a... Yeah, I've told you this. You were probably imbibed yeah, at the time. But now, <laughs> speaking of Easter, Ducko, speaking of Easter, a very good friend of yours who you used to share a commentary role with. A BT. Big BT. Now, BT divides opinion. Brian Taylor. There's been a lot of talk. I'm following on all these social platforms. The the negative feedback that people like Joel Selwood and, and you know, legends like Luke Hodge. I mean, these guys Yourself. are absolute legends. Trent Cotchin. No, not myself. These guys are... Well, you still guys got are, some heat on um, social media? Yeah, but... Are you talking about me, heat, mainstream heat media? For, heat for me. When you've been on the front page and, and in the media as often what, as I in, have... Instead of the back page. A dingbat on social media, it is literally water off a duck's back. But when you're talking Pardon about guys like Trent Cotchin and Joel Selwood, who are pillars... Recently out of the game. They are, and, and absolute legends of the game. Yep. You know, premiership captains, have, premiership Joel's had a players, stand named after him. Unbelievable human beings. The, the, the comments about their, their media performing is horrendous. So, which brings but, us into who you were talking about. It, it's an absolute disgrace. BT, he gets a lot of uh, negative feedback as well, as do... I, I think that's surprising. I reckon BT's prob- I love probably, it. if not the best commentator in Australia. I love BT. 
Yeah, he's a good bloke. I love him. He probably should have said no at the Easter egg table over the weekend. Yeah, but he carries it well. What I loved, what he did on the weekend, wasn't about football, is he got around and he was down at Bells Beach. Oh, now you just saw that down on Instagram. I did. And he spoke to Kelly Slater, who was an 11-time world champ. World champ. He, it, I, I just, they were thrilled to talk to BT. People don't understand what a, what a following he has. So I hate the negativity around him and the job that he does because yep. I think he's terrific. He goes into the rooms afterwards. A lot of time Roaming he's, Brian. He's, he's put on the spot. He gets the dad's name or the mum's name wrong or the, he calls you know, someone's uh, brother that's the partner or, he, you know, yeah, which, yeah. which I think adds to the whole theatre of what he does after a game <laughs> of footy. But I love BT. And the thing that apparently Kelly Slater did find out about him yeah. and this didn't go to air. So this, I hope they pick up, someone picks news? up on this. This is breaking news. Go for it, Duck. BT, while he was down there talking to these world champions and coaches and, you know, everyone down there, anything to do with surfing, he tried to take his paddleboard out. <laughs> he snuck up and tried to get his paddleboard well, his wetsuit. Out, but he got caught because the paddleboard's that big. It, it turns like the Queen Mary. He couldn't turn it around. BT had this skin tight wetsuit. I don't know whether where he got one that was big enough. Is there any footage of this? He, well, I would love there to be some footage because apparently he's, he's out there and he's trying to paddle. So obviously not where the surfers were having yeah, their yeah. comp. But he's so he's got a big long board. He's well, it'd be fair to say it's long and wide board, <laughs> at, which is why it turns like the Queen like Mary. The Queen but Mary. If anyone's got vision of BT trying to surf down there at Bell's Beach, I'd love to get it. That would be awesome vision. Hey, the other thing is, which it would be, the other thing is, for those who haven't seen the Kelly Slater interview, it is on at 7AFL on Instagram. And I reckon a large majority of the public don't understand how difficult it would be to do roaming Brian and also interview other people from another sport that he's not that familiar with. Well, it's I, actually a masterstroke of what he can do. Yeah, well, there's also... I remember an interview that he did with... Um, George Foreman. George dropped yes. the phone and walked out on him twice during the interview. <laughs> was it set up? Well, who's the, uh, who's the girl that got uh, Nadia Komenich? Yes. Nadia Komenich. The Russian ice skater. The ice skater. Gymnast, you nickwit. Oh, wit. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> she... <laughs> oh, God. Um, BT interviewed her one day. And I've got, to, I've got to tell you the story because if you – quickly. So yep. he's interviewing, interviewing Nadia Komenich or Komenichi, I don't know how to pronounce it properly, but he was talking to her about yep. uh, a lead-up tournament to the Olympics. might have been 74 – anyway, it was in the 70s. So she got the perfect – so leading up to that, mm. BT sort of says, oh, well, Nadia, you know, you, uh, you uh, didn't get a – you only got seven in the lead-up competition and, you know, were you thinking about retirement? And she, she said to BT, I was eight. <laughs> You've got to hear it. And then the George Foreman. So, yes, naturally I, talented. I've been in that situation. I interviewed Kelly Slater at Melbourne Airport and I said, oh, you know, congratulations on getting through to the semis. He said, I was knocked out in the first <laughs> round. <laughs> yeah, oh anyway, now speaking of BT, we know he's a formidable figure in the mainstream media and he does a lot of good stuff for Channel 7. Now, you used to sit next to him on a Friday night. And the other thing that came up on Instagram the other day, Matthew Richardson, the great special comments man, and Dale Thomas, who has joined the network as a special comments person, both fantastic at their job. Now, they've taken to Instagram to whinge about their seat allocation on the Virgin Airlines flight interstate. Now, you and BT are known or were known to travel together. What's the hierarchical situation when you are travelling interstate from... Channel Seven. I don't know whether it's changed or not, but if you're flying from if you're flying from Melbourne to Adelaide or Sydney, yeah, you're in cattle class because cattle. it's a, a small flight. Although, that's, so that's a ca- economy. Although you're platinum flyers yeah. because you because of the travel, so we're we're all platinum. So th- therefore, you get upgraded anyway. So you end up you can fly at the pointy end, and then any flight, so from Brisbane to Perth, generally they'll fly you up the uh, pointy end. Although I'm not sure about, you know. Or Dale or any of those, but BT B- just got the record for goals at the MCG. Just just a little uh, just a little note about BT and travel. BT will be at the airport four hours before the plane leaves, and he goes and lines up at the premium line an hour and twenty minutes before the plane leaves, and he just stands there with his bag. I'm not joking. If you're at the airport 
and you're on a flight, you know that the Channel 7, you will see BT at the front of the premium line an hour before the plane leaves. Is he an airport nuffy? What do you mean? Well, when they people turn around and they go to collect their bags from the carousel and they basically block everybody else from getting their bags? B, well, why not? BT is a big blocker, don't worry about that. But he likes to get on the plane first and off the plane first. I remember so, once the uh, the front doors got locked, so he had to, they had to disembark off the back. It was the last off. Absolutely loved it. Let's get on to something a little bit more um, serious. Yep. And that is what's going on in the AFL at the moment. And the, the drug... Which specifically? Well, the drug policy. Yes. Is what it... Are you, is what, it? Are you, what are your... What's your take on it? I've sat take. back and watched over the weekend and during the course of the week. A lot of people have had their opinions on it. I thought... By the way, I thought Patrick Dangerfield, the president of the Players Association, spoke extremely well yes. about the topic. Let me bring that up, Duck, because that's something that I agree with. Now, Patrick Dangerfield was on ABC Radio yesterday uh, before the Geelong and Hawthorne game, and his comments are, I think there are a few dinosaurs living under a rock out there with regards to the realities of modern society and whether or not you agree with it. We get it. It doesn't make it okay, but we also have to live in the land that is reality. I thought that was poignant. I know he didn't specify anything, but as the boss of the AFL Players Association, it is poignant to think that we are a modern society. You can't base a 2005, I think it is, drugs policy on 2024. And this has all come about because of an ex-doctor at the Melbourne Footy Club and the ex-president. And also Andrew Wilkie, the senator who grandstanded in Parliament. They gave him that information, clearly. He didn't know. Is that fact? Well, I, I, that's what I'm assuming. How else would have he yeah, he did been it. given that information? He went to Parliament on the Tuesday night and then the Herald Sun's Michael Warner published it on the front page Wednesday. Yeah, but someone had had to have spoken to him. Mm. So, you know, I'd have, but once again, I don't know whether it was a doctor or whether it was the ex-president or who it was, but they've Well, clearly, the ex-doctor then went to Chip the Grand and spoke spoken. on the age. The thing the that I will say about all of this, I feel, given what we know now yep. about... Um, and, and I've known and heard the whispers about that sort of stuff, and there's Which room. There's stuff? always been rumours about well, Melbourne well, or generally. Well, well players self-reporting. Yes. So that, that's what everyone seems to have a bugbear about: that a player shouldn't be able to self-report. Um, having spoken to club doctors, and one of uh, our old club doctors, who was the AFL club doctor for a period of time, Harry Unglick, he explained to me how many how many players have been saved by having this. This in place. Can you specify saved from, saved. from well, a week, well, from that life? Have, yeah, well, well, their life, their life. So you know they've they've self-reported and then they've been able to turn their whole life around. And I think there's numerous. And yes, you're always going to get someone that take it, takes advantage of a loophole, and if yeah, that's what me. you want to call it. And once again, what's yeah. forgotten about all of this is this is a player-driven. Um, this is a player-driven drug testing yep. format. Instigated by the AFL? Correct. No, instigated by the Players Association, not by the AFL. So, look, I I feel sorry out of all of this, and once you you hear it all, and I don't believe in rumour and innuendo, and now that people are saying, oh, well, remember years ago, um, he missed a game and he he missed an extra four weeks because of a hammy, and yep. you know that was because of. Dr- I don't believe, or I don't take any of that in. I'm I'm looking at the whole the the whole story over. Uh, what was an incredible, and and some of it was escalated into an area that I just thought was blown out of complete proportion. But I keep coming back to I feel sorry for the, now, not because of his stupidity, like Joel Smith's stupidity of obviously taking a social drug during the week and then still testing positive on game day yep. is just dumb. Right, so so stupid yeah. in it in its highest <clears throat> form, but I just feel like he's been made a little bit of a scapegoat. Oh, I totally agree. Given that players can self-report and not be named or shamed at all, I just think he's been thrown under the bus a little bit, Joel Smith. If he was a big name, it would have been kept silent. I reckon. Yeah, I don't disagree with that at all. Yeah, um, Wayno, you obviously played what two hundred and Wayno, Wayne duck, uh, played duck, duck played. Yeah. Uh, 272 games? Yeah, what, 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 we're reading, reading out my stats now, are we? No, what what do you need to know Allow me for? to go into the next part of the conversation. Do you th- did you ever take illicit substances when you were playing? Never. 
Do you think any of your teammates mind you, did? Mind you, I think the, the bigger story is, in my opinion, and certainly during my time, was, you know, the, the alcohol consumption. Now, yeah. I never drank during the week, but after every game, I would go and have plenty of beers. Yep. And then the next day, if you play Friday night, then you have plenty of beers on a sad day as well. And sometimes it could even spill into Sunday. So that was our culture then. It, yep. was, a, it was a beer drinking culture. Um, yep. So, what I think what Paddy Dangerfield was alluding to was the fact that that this is how society's changed. We yeah. we were beer, dr- we, you know, that footballers were beer drinkers. And this was thirty and years then, ago, and, and and it is, you know, it is just like society. You know, these things have come into society. Therefore, mm. it's always going to be. It's always going to find its way into sport because you're just an extension of society. Yeah. Um, do you think any of your teammates might have uh, indulged? Uh, I'd be naive to think they didn't, but I certainly didn't know about it. It's funny, I was anti, anti, anti anything other than a beer. Other than beer. And yet beer's every bit as bad as social drugs. It's probably worse. You think about it. So, um, but that was accepted. Yep. And and legal. Yep. Right? So they're the differences with the two. But no, I I never knew of any... Uh, Heard um, of anyone taking maybe maybe marijuana might have been not not to play though no I'm not sure I've never had marijuana before but I assume from what I've been told about it you'd probably go out there and want to eat a lot of cookies <laughs> <laughs> you might eat the football well, well, halfway through the third well <laughs> apparently it does make you eat a lot yeah <laughs> sure you're, you're not chuffing <laughs> no no. Um, no, uh, look, the other part of that is to go back to Joel Smith without highlighting Joel Smith, which it sounds like a contradiction. I'm not sure any AFL player would go out on match day taking an illicit substance, whether that be cocaine, ecstasy, yeah. methamphetamine. I'm not sure it's performance enhancing. Well, I agree, but, but I'd like to ask you, why would anybody think that would be the case? I, I don't know of any player of the past... 50 years, who's put on an AFL jumper and says, I'm going to inject, snort, consume an illicit substance, which is going to make me better on the field of play. No, there's only, I think there's only one player in the history, that, and that was Justin Charles, and that was steroids, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Steroids should be banned, and they are. Yeah. But in terms of illicit substance consumption, it doesn't make any sense. Well, we're on the, the game of footy. And as we said off the top, didn't watch any of the games, but I'm across what... Are you sure? Did you not see one minute? I've seen on Twitter. So I've looked at what the big stories are. Yep, which is now X. And then I've gone into those particular topics or games and had a look at what we'll be discussing today. And one of them I want to get, and it's a big jump, but this is on field, Jack Ginevan. Oh, you know we've got one more to go back to. What? Tony Shaw. Yeah, well, we'll get to okay. We'll get to Tony Shaw. So Jack Ginnivan, yes, like not getting. Uh, there were two absolute certain free kicks that I saw that even he should more. have got yesterday. Even more. Yep. Well, I've just looked at the ones like I said that pop up on my Twitter, and they were one hundred percent free kicks. People keep talking about this raising of the arm, and it was very interesting to hear Joel Selwood say uh, a week ago when I was watching footy that he. He made an art of lifting that arm, therefore making talking the, about the, himself. The, the, yes, making the tackle slide high. Well, Jack Ginnivan didn't lift the arm. He when he at, on one occasion, the example that I saw, picked the ball up and he's coming up on an angle. Never did he duck his head. Correct. He didn't even actually lean into it. He just stayed at the level that he was at. And what I'm finding really frustrating about uh, Ginnivan is now players are actually going after his head. Yeah, they are. Talk about protecting mm. of the head. Jack Ginnivan is getting hit in the head every week and not getting a free kick. I think it's deplorable. And I think the AFL actually have to step in. And and more importantly, maybe the Players Association grow some avocados oh. and actually step in and say, enough's enough. Stop umpiring this kid out of the game because that's what they're doing. Now, I understand he does it sometimes, but the two examples that I saw, and there was even an example that they showed where he was taking a mark and the arm came across the shoulder. Yep. Tell you what, Charlie Kernow would have been given that one. Oh, I totally agree. Oh, I feel sorry for Jack as a, as a key forward, Charlie Kernow would have been given that one that was over the shoulder yep. and Jack Ginevan gets nothing. I think it's deplorable. Yes. You agree? I agree. 
Okay. And, and the other part of Jack Kinnevin, I think it was in the first quarter, he was lying on his back in a ball-up contest and a Geelong player, and I hope I get this right, I think it was Brandon Parfitt, came in and potentially illegally elbowed him in the nose. Ginevan's gone off with a blood nose and nobody's brought this up. Now, you're not allowed to hit a player in the head accidentally or deliberately. So why wasn't that brought up? Yeah, no, totally concur. Um, back to Tony Shaw yep. and the uh, and Gavin his Krasiska. comments about his teammate, Gavin back, Krasiska, back who, from, by the way, a very good player, Gavin Krasiska. Yeah, number 28 off the halfback flank yeah. and left foot. Yeah, always had to keep an eye on Gav. He, he had a little bit of... Um, Did you ever play on him? No. But he played on a half As the flank. third bloke coming over the top. Well, he supported whoever was Mickey playing. Mickey Gafer and Craig because Kelly. They, and he needed, they needed it. Um, <laughs> but he... Well, Tony Shaw's comments about his premiership teammate saying that if he knew that uh, Gav... Because Gav's openly said that he was taking um, drugs during his football career. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Or was it after his football career? No, no, it was during... Okay, so he's openly said that. Yep. He's and, and, and he had mental health problems. Yeah, and Tony's come out and said that he would, if he'd known, he would have got rid of him. Tony Shaw came out on 3AW, I think it was either Sunday or yesterday, and said that he would have sacked Gavin Krasiska as a teammate had he known then at the time if he was using an illicit substance. Yeah, even though it's, it's a non-performing... Performance enhancing. Performance yep. enhancing, yeah. Yeah, it's strong, strong words, but it sort of goes to show you that that time, and what you what you is that showing Shorey's age? Of course it is. That's what yeah. I mean. I I think if I was asked the same question back then, I would be equally as disappointed. Yep. What you do is you you it, it's very easy to say in hi, in hindsight now you would you wouldn't be saying get rid of him. You'd be supporting him and making yep. sure that he gets the education and and everything else yep. to actually get through it. Rather than you know, just just say see you later and then yeah. How do you reckon Krasiska would be feeling today? Um, yesterday, it's it's a good question. I can't answer how someone else would be feeling. It's pretty. I shouldn't say they're poor comments, but I think they are. I don't think they're well thought of. Yes, it's sure his opinion, and he can turn out and come out and speak his mind. But to say that in hindsight, I think is a little rough. Like, wouldn't you turn around as a teammate? I know you were uh, captain of the North Melbourne football team and you'd say to player X, look, if you're going through something, put your arm around him and say, can we help? Not, we're going to sack you. Yeah. No, it, well, it's it, strong words and that's how Shorey obviously put himself back in that time to make that opinion. And I'm yep. sure if Shorey was playing today, that would be very different. But that's certainly the way things were done then, just like, a lot of other things that were done back then. Yeah. You could punch a guy in the back of the head. The, all of the things that we're going through now with concussion, yep. with the racism saga. By the way, Eddie Betts, you know. Do you have an opinion it on seem, that? It seems every, every month or couple of months, you know, Eddie and his family are going through this. Well, what, what can you say? It's deplorable behaviour. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's sad to think that people in society can, can even fathom to – well. Why would you go out of your way to drive past yeah. a person's house in Glen Iris yeah. well, and yell out the N-word four times? You know what? Once again, once again, what I would say to Eddie, and I've heard Eddie speak a lot about, you know, the way this affects his children and it affects him. What I would say to Eddie is to, to work on tools to talk to his kids and also, also for himself to help him understand that, the comments aren't about him and his and his colour and or and or his kids. It's about the people saying it. They're the ones with the issues. They're the yeah. ones that need need the help. And I understand. And, and uh, there's a lot of work that you can do in and around that that would help Eddie and his children get through what clearly just keeps raising its ugly head, which is absolutely terrible. Yeah, it is. I, just on that duck, do you think if it was your children, you got three beautiful kids? Do you think if they were in the backyard playing basketball or football and somebody drove past and said to the kids four times, you see, you see, you see, you see, I'm sure people can work out what the word is. I would have jumped the back fence. And run after them. But that's me. And you know what? And that's, that, went, that went away with dinosaurs too, you know. Well, anyway, I, I, we I know how I'd react at the end of the day. You go back. Um, well, the we police could stay are looking on, for those people too. We, yeah, we could stay on that topic for a 
a long or time. Or a day. Holding, holding the ball and umpiring decisions at the moment, and we, we talk about this year after year, the inconsistency around it is, is, is just terrible. I mean, I, it is so inconsistent how a player with no prior opportunity gets pinged holding the ball, then a player with you know two or three seconds gets pinged, the ball gets knocked out, and it's play on. I can understand the frustration around you know the supporters that watch these you know th- these games, and I, once again, only this morning, um, I've watched these examples. It's just yeah, I, it, it's unwatchable. Mm. I, don't, I wouldn't go that far, but it's certainly frustrating. I had – you'll be interested to note this. Um, a, an AFL club executive texted me last night and said the AFL should fix the game and the tribunal before worrying about the drugs. Well, it's – really? Well, it, it's a bad look. I mean, let's go over – so we go back to Thursday night. Collingwood played Brisbane in Brisbane. Now, a legend of the game, and he's still playing Scott Penderbury. He whacks Lockie Neal in the guts. Yep. Now, I don't want to see Scott Pendlebury suspended, but it's inconsistent. He was given a fine. Yes, he apologised to Lockie Neal. Lockie Neal said, no dramas, no issues. But where are the consistencies? James Sicily kicks an Essendon player and is let off. What the hell is going on? Liam Baker goes for a marking contest. He's given a week. Windhager from St Kilda. Now, I'm sure he didn't mean to knock out that Essendon guy. He gets a week. The, um, people are happy with the AFL if there's consistencies, but it seems a popularity contest. Yeah, well, it depends on who does the crime. But Peter Wright, how do you get four weeks for going it. in for a mark? I will say the, the penalty one was soft, but if that was Toby Green, Toby Green gets a week. Simple as that. That's do you think Penelbury should have got weeks or a week? I, I, I don't like anyone to, anyone get a game for something so innocuous. Of, of that nature, which yeah. isn't, you know, and by the way... You can hit someone with force with an open hand with that part of your palm. Yep. You know, and if you've done Kung Fu. Oh, Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> but you can. That's a very hard part. And you don't that's, Kung that's Fu. That's every bit as much yeah, you, you sometimes, can do with that. Sometimes you can do with worse that. if you hit somebody so, in the sternum. So should have he got a week. Glad he didn't get a week. But let's, let's see how the year plays out. You watch. Someone will get a week for, for doing that into, into the stomach of someone else. Which also brings us to... The media, of which why I enjoy doing this show and not be on free-to-air TV and be muzzled, because the media, the football media I'm talking about, not talking about current affair or 60 Minutes and all of those, you know. Spotlight. Yeah, because they, that, that's what they do and TMZ and that's, that's their job. They yep. go through bins and they find out what people are doing in their private lives. When has it become popular for the football media to start talking about all of the rhubarb that gets thrown around and about players' private lives and about trips to Vegas and and then, you know, you, you hear that young Wick from Sydney and, and I'm, I don't know, I'm reading between the lines. I don't know what's occurred there, but he's been given well, the week what off. What do you think it is? I don't know. You should do. Do you? No, I don't. What's well, only been... Proposed, yeah. That so there was, so there I was don't, a situation so, with a teammate. So I don't take. So once again, it's that rumor is built off the back of Sydney's given him a week. Football out. media, Sydney's no, no, given him the a football w- media has has built this up into a, a bigger story well, than the what Sydney it is. Or the Brisbane well, one. it's not a it's not a football story. I disagree. It's a private life uh, story. I disagree. Well, so when the players in off season are in Vegas, yeah, how is that a football story? It's be- if if oh, oh sorry, they draw it. They draw the correlation that that oh what now they're they're out of form because of a trip they had to Vegas what five months ago. Yeah, that's well. That's, I agree with Jonathan Brown. If it was such an crap. issue, that's it would have come out in November or December. But bye bye. They've had a chance to win all the games they've been in. That that is bull crap. Yeah, well, they keep Collingwood scoreless in the second quarter. Yeah, but why no? no. I want don't to bring like it. No, but you but I want to bring up if I think Matthew Lloyd said this, happy wife, happy life. So if you are happy at home, it'll affect your football. So yes, it is a football story. <laughs> well what, what I'm not sure th- I'm I'm not sure I have the qualifications oh, to, well, to talk about that. I'd be a hypocrite if I went into that area, wouldn't well, I? Well, do you want to bring up past No, well that's what I'm saying. I'd be a hypocrite if I was to to talk about what I, I've never thought that a player's personal life should be um, spoken about, especially from football media. 
So, you know, if, if that's your job as a, yeah. as a sport journalist, stay away from all the other crap. I'm glad, I'm glad Gary Lyon sort of steered away from it because he should, he should know better. So Slightly contradictory. Gary turns around and says it's a footy story and it should be left to the front of the pages, but then they were discussing it. Yeah, well, we're discussing it now, which we're because giving it's it too a story. much of time. Well, it's not a story. Well, it is a story. Do, okay, do you think it is, has any correlation to the Brisbane Lions in the no. United States? No. Their form? That well, is, the whole situation. That's crap. Well, the journalist who brought it up I thought was a little disappointing. He brought it up, but it was so vague and then said, well, I shouldn't bring it up. And... Well, I know, speaking of um, TMZ-type scenarios, it has been alleged by Channel 9's Tom Morris that the Brisbane Lions want to silence the Herald Sun and 3AW. Not silence, yeah. that's the wrong word, but certainly put boycott. a ban on them. Boycott. boycott, yeah. Boycott. I saw that on my Twitter as well. Um, I tried that. It yeah. doesn't work. <laughs> I tried. I tr- you tried with Neil Mitchell, the Herald I Sun. Did, I did. I tried. Uh, uh, you know what? I've, I've, I realised at some point, at one point, not that it's helped me, even though I realised it, you can't beat the power of the pen. Mm. You, 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 can't, you can't win. So you boycott the Herald Sun, which, you know we, know, we know who the Herald Sun are, and we boycott, you know, a radio station, and all that they do is they just go harder. Correct. And it, 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 you end up, you, you, you lose. I must say, for any footballers out there, current... You certainly don't have to go out of your way to do anything for no, them. No, I agree. But, but boycotting, I think, is probably on the... You end up losing. Yep. And for all those players out there, both current and emerging, and even past, if you befriend journalists and or media, media organisations... Yes. What's the old are, saying? What's the old saying? About keeping your enemy... Yes, keeping your friends close and your enemies closer. Yes, I worked that out far too late as well. Correct. So what I would say to those listening is befriend journalists. You don't have to like them, but they will what, find what you, it... So what, when you say befriend, what take them, go out and catch up with them and have dinner? I'm not sure about dinner, but if you buy them a beer or say hello... I, journalists... I, I will say this about journalists... And this I know for a fact. And what you're saying is 100% right. Because I know there are a lot of journalists that are still working in football now, talk about TMZ, and they know heaps of things, way more than what they've written about or spoken about. Like, I'm, And yeah. I'm talking big names, big, big stories, yes. and they have not been written or have not been spoken about because of friendships. Correct. So you have hit the nail on the head yeah. right there. Something a little bit more positive than uh, gutter journalism, and that is uh, big Tom Hawkins yesterday Star. playing. Four goals. Did he kick four, did he? Kick four. Oh, you got to Joe the Goose from Jeremy Cameron late in the game. 350 games for a guy of his body type is remarkable because it was only seven, eight years ago, it might be a little bit less than that, where I thought he had some lower back problems and you thought Tommy might be gone. He's got better with age. All-Australian. And All-Australian captain, wasn't he? Uh, Was he All-Australian? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Five-time, I think, All-Australian now. And they've all come at the back end of his career. It does also highlight, though, the dilution and the way the game has changed, that Tom can evolve the way he has. But he's got to take – because I I heard Chris Scott speak speak about it and he said that, you know, the the fact that – He's been able to evolve his game because a lot of people say, "Oh, Tony, Lock- if Tony Locker was playing now, he wouldn't be." Able- well, just like Tom Hawkins, yeah. he would adapt to how the game's played now. So, unbelievable effort, and doesn't look like he's slowing down. And you, uh, you were privileged enough to be requested to send him a 350 game congratulatory message. Yeah, what did yeah. you say? Well, well done, Tom. Can you elaborate? 350 games. Well, that's a personal thing. Yes, yeah. you're, you've got a lot of that um, journo TMZ. Well, well, well you are. You're a TMZ yeah, man. But, yeah, but I don't care. Yeah, but well, no, but people you should will, care. Well, isn't that contradictory coming from a bloke called the Truth Hurts? No, but I'm not. Well, the Truth Hurts. I'm telling the truth. I'm not yeah. going on gossip or innuendo no, like you, Ding. But it's not do. innuendo. I, people want to know and say, "Oh, Wayne Carey gave Tom Hawkins a congratulatory message, which was asked through I'm not, I'm not sure. through mutual friends," and people say, "I wonder what he said." I'm not sure that. Uh, you know, 
Is that big well, a deal? Well, you cracked the shits last week about me bringing up you'd been um, cancelling Max King. Cancelling? Counselling. Oh. That Ross Lyon and I should have do. Anyway, gather round this weekend. <laughs> now, we're going over tomorrow. Yeah, oh, I, yeah. before gather round, any day. You might, by the way. Tom Hawkins. You haven't got a flight yet. You might be on the train tonight. Well, the way you're going, Kmart will be buying you your Jetstar ticket. You might be on the train tonight. It goes overnight. Well, I used to get on that train back oh, in the yeah? day. When you were 16? When I was, yes. <laughs> I used to love it. What, Greg Miller would give you 100 bucks for a train ticket? I used to love getting the train. Oh, yeah. You know, back then you'd what? just, you know, roam around the carriages and meet people. What? It was great. What, meet some girlfriends? Oh. <laughs> so yeah, gather what? round. It is huge in Adelaide. Can we As go we back? Know, it would be remiss of us not to discuss one Jack... Um, Tom Hawkins, sorry, Tom Hawkins, and the tiny issue about the phone at three-quarter time when they had a 43-minute break for the Lightning. Well, for all of those that have blown this into something bigger, my understanding, once again, well read on the topic, is that he was looking at the weather forecast and what was going on, and there are certain people in that room that are allowed to have phones. It wasn't his, One being it the wasn't, wasn't his phone. Yep. It was... You know, and he was looking at the forecast to see when they were able to get back out on the ground. By the way, far too long. Over exactly forty-three minutes. Oh, you know. Well, he went and had a Macona coffee yeah. that Jeremy yeah, Cameron got it. him. I, yeah, it was it was too long. I mean, even even you know, I. G. Dermot I, was uh, dismissive of the weather. Was he? Jason Dunst would turn oh. around and say, "Well, why are we taking advice from the Bureau of Meteorology when they can't get the next day right?" I love I love Dermy. He's another one in the media. I know he's old, he's old school, but I just think he's matter of fact, says it how it is. I like the way he goes about it. But I am looking forward to getting over to Adelaide. Yes. I'm well, not watching any You're footage. You're going Jetstar, are you, after your trip there. to Brisbane or Toowoomba? Certainly not flying Jetstar. We'll be Have flying you given Virgin. them the Tijuana? But you have jets. Oh, well, sometimes, sometimes you've got no choice. Oh, yes, you do. And if someone's booked you that ticket, I tell you what, which I take they it, did, I, I the company it. that I was, they booked the ticket, so I, I couldn't. Cancel. I'd take a Greyhound bus over Jetstar. Well, Tony, your ticket's not booked yet, <laughs> so I wouldn't be talking just yet. You might, Terry, you might, we're going Qantas, aren't you we? You might be flying. Uh, but Virgin, I, I will be flying Virgin. Hey, no, you, I'll be going Rex. They, they upgraded me from Sydney to Melbourne three weeks ago for a very good price, and they were outstanding, Rex. They're the new Virgin. Got their old planes. you know where Rex originated from? Regional Express. Wagga Wagga. Did they? Yep. That's where they do all their training. And every, yeah, yeah, you didn't know no, I didn't know that. Well, there you go. That's, That's where uh, you flew on. Uh, you flew into Lock, You flew into Wagga Wagga on Lachlan Murdoch's jet. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going over for gather round. It's going to be huge. All the wineries. Spend time in the Adelaide Hills. What's your favourite winery? Yeah, I'm My sure favorite. everybody want to no, meet I, you over there for I'd, an autograph. I don't. I wouldn't have a favourite wine. I like the Adelaide Hills. Yep. Is that predominantly white or red? Oh, I don't know, Tony. Well, you're a good... Not that big of... I'm not going to be... Uh, so you're going to break your fast wine? No, I'm not going to be tasting the produce. Although Adelaide, I think, in terms of produce around Australia, I think Adelaide comes a very close second behind Tasmania. Colder climate? I, Adelaide just nail their produce. And, yep. I, and so does... So does as well, I've you're a former resident. About Tassie. Um, boxing tomorrow night. We yes. spoke about this... Nathan Brown's of, of got the biggest ago. job in Australia this week. I've already said if Nathan Brown gets beaten, he will not be able to show his face. He certainly won't be able to at Triple M. So well, should he take a week off be, for penance? It's, it's, that is that is fascinating. By the way, you can watch. You've got to if you want to watch these uh, old has been footballers. Uh, Corey McKernan's lost about seven kilos. Anthony Rocker has lost about 15, 20 kilos. That's a lot. So so those two are fighting each they're other. The, they're the heavyweight. Yep, and then and there's Swanee and Pettifer. Daisy, Kane Pettifer and uh, Mitch Matt Robinson. Mitch. Yep, and then Kane Corns and Nathan Brown. Yep. So there's. I okay, give us your four. Uh, give us your four opinions. No, well, come no, on. No, I well, you're very good at boxing. I'm looking forward to going over that just for a little bit of humour. Are you going to break your fast? Am I? Yes. No, I'm not. You're going to stay sober the whole weekend. Hang on. Well, is it it's called million. fast? Is it is not having a well, not having a beer? That's not fasting. Fasting's when you you should fast for about eight weeks. Yeah. No, I'm going to get. There's a couple of I'll words. I tell you what, I'm, get, I'm, I'm going to get you on. I'll get me on the man shake, are you? I'm going to get you on to the man shake. Going to get Adam McDougall and Rosie to send I've, us down some packets. I've always been. I've always been oh, pessimist when it's come to 
anything to do with, you know, man shake, um, any, anything that enhances you to lose weight. At the end of the day, you exercise and you eat well. And I've said this always to everyone, out, abs are made in the kitchen, not the gym. So it's what you consume. The thing that the man shake does, that, and the reason why I like it, and, it's, and you can go and get protein shakes and everything else, but the thing that I like about the man is that it puts people in a frame of mind and what they automatically do while they're having it is they, they do train more. Yep. They do watch what they're reading. You know, it doesn't mean just because you have the man shake doesn't mean you, you starve yourself and don't eat. Correct. But because you're doing it, it enhances what you're doing well on the other side. So all of that plays into feeling great. So I've had a good result from it. A lot of mates, a lot of mates over the years have, have been on it and I've told them they're nitwits and I've, uh, I've tried it. You're a convert. Uh, oh, yeah, no, it's, it's helped. Well, it doesn't, you, doesn't give you that. Have we got the camera on this? <laughs> doesn't give you that. Why don't, why don't you do what you normally do at the pub when you have a beer and lift up your top and show your abs? Yeah, okay. Anyway, that's about it. Is it? For about... No, no it's not. We've got we've got to mention Tim Zoo. Yeah, okay. How good he was on the weekend, even though it was a split decision loss. I've never I haven't seen that much blood in a boxing match for many years. Has there ever been a bigger discrepancy in height? Probably in, not. In a boxing Well Sebastian Fundura was six foot six and Tim Zoo's five foot ten. Tim Zoo's not that tall. Five foot eight. I think he might even be shorter than that. I will. Tyson was what's Tyson five ten. He Lennox Lewis six four. So you know that's that's did, not as big. But that's still that's, that's big for a heavyweight. Yeah, you're allowed to watch boxing. I I I actually missed the fight, but I yep. saw some highlights. Um, almighty effort from Zoo. Did, almighty effort. I mean, so hard a guy of guy yeah. of that size, but you know, still obviously under the weight. It's did, does quite it, incredible. Does it boost like a Zoo's, playing menace? Yeah. Does it boost Zoo's profile? Of course it does. Or do people think in the back of the mind, well, it was a split decision loss and he goes back a grade? I think given that he took the fight late, so wasn't prepared probably men- mentally, like I'm sure if he knew that he was fighting a guy of that height months yep. out, he would have been fighting taller people in the ring, which he wouldn't have been doing in the lead up to the fight. Yep. So his preparation, if they get another fight, which I hope they do, yeah. I think Zoo wins and wins well. Well, they were talking about uh, Zoo's next fight. Maybe Errol Spence, and there was talking of a purse of fifteen point three million dollars. Good on him. I hope so. Look, the other thing is, I hope Zoo doesn't I'd like have to any see a rematch of those two. Yeah, yeah. And Fundura actually went into Zoo's room after the fight and gave him one of the belts, which is enormous. And I hope they do fight because the rematch will be such a different contest. I mean, a lot of people are saying after Zoo went down with the elbow, uh, the elbow to the uh, forehead. That it should have been called off, and he would have remained the unified world champion. Yeah, so well, anyway. that's the courage of the man. Like I said before, those fights tomorrow night in Adelaide, you can uh, book and watch them on stand. Yes, I don't normally say this. I've been the footballers, you know, fighting footballers and all that sort of stuff, but I think this is going to be quite entertaining because I, I want so. to see my ex teammate Corey McKernan. So there's some thing I know Brownie well. Yep, I know uh, Pets Kane, well. I know Pets well. I know Swanee well. I know yep. Daisy well. We all know Kane. I know Kane, you know, well, but we just, uh, there's a, just a lot of interest to see who's going to uh, do okay and, and not. And the thing that I found out, a little birdie told me, was that Kane Pettifer and Mitch Robinson, they will be wearing lighter gloves. Okay. So the other fights, they're all 20 ounce or 22 ounce, which is ba- basically like having pillows on each hand. Yep. Whereas those two have agreed to wear. Well, it would be a gloves. great contest. And I also heard that um, – I think you revealed this on our previous podcast – that uh, McKernan had been training with Barry Hall. Yes. Has so that'll a little bit hold him in good stead. All right, Tony, you're talking rhubarb now. Yeah, I've got one for, to finish with, Wayne. <laughs> the Tom Hawkins played in his 350th match yesterday and was fantastic. Now, if you are going to sing the club theme song afterwards in the rooms – and you give us that rendition, don't even bother. Geelong were deplorable yesterday. Don't sing it. What do you mean? They sang the theme song after the game, after the win, for Tom Hawkins' 350th. They may as well have not sung it. Do it properly or don't do it at all. 
Are you seriously yeah. upset about how they? No, I'm not upset. It's just it's a bad look. Bad note. I want to. I want to see the NRL, like the NRL guys or the EPL guys or the European soccer guys who go nuts in the room after a game. Well, I think it's not AFL bloke saying. Well, my well, clearly, if the game's been suspended for 45 minutes, it's still a win over an arch rival, and, then, and it was huge for the 350. How long after did they sing the song? Probably four hours after the oh, game yeah, had finished. Anyway, Tony, not good enough. You know what, Tony? There's bigger. Thanks, you know, Wayne. I'll see you in Adelaide. Okay. All right. Thanks again. See you next week.